Hello everyone. Uh, in the following minutes, I would like to discuss with you these current hot topics such as the LAC trial and to see whether is there any evidence to use endoscopic approach for early cervical cancer or not. But first of all, what does LAC trial mean? It means laparoscopic approach to cervical cancer which certainly give us an idea on of what, what was the scope of this trial, which was recently published in New England Journal of Medicine a couple of weeks ago. The primary endpoint of the trial was to determine whether a minimally invasive surgery, either by laparoscopy or by robotic, was equivalent to total abdominal radical hysterectomy at 4.5 years of disease-free survival. Um, and please let me emphasize that the authors wanted to demonstrate equivalences among groups. So they thought that both arms would be associated with similar disease-free survival. Therefore, they designed a non-inferiority study aimed to enroll a total of 770 patients per arm. So what it was interesting in this surgical trial was that a surgeon proficiency was planned to select the surgeons in this study. An independent committee reviewed at least two unedited surgical videos of minimally invasive radical hysterectomy to decide whether these surgeons met the, the surgical standard or not to enroll patients. The trial was open in June 2008 and it was prematurely closed in June 2017 uh, when over 630 out of 740 patients were already included. The reason was that the Data Safety Monitor Committee provided an alert based on a safety signal detected in one of the arms. At this point, the median follow-up for oncological outcomes was 2.5 years instead of the planet 4.5 years and the information at 4.5 years was available in 60 and 55% of women for disease-free survival and overall survival, respectively. As you may see in these Kaplan-Meier curves, disease-free survival was significantly worse in minimally invasive surgery, surg surgical arm in comparison with open surgery, and patients who underwent radical hysterectomy by minimally invasive surgery approach had a four times higher risk of local regional recurrences and six times higher risk of death. The authors concluded that these results should be discussed with patients scheduled to undergo radical hysterectomy. But what it was interesting was that LAC trials results were completely unexpected and as a consequence we might have to take a step back. And this is a very, very um, interesting thing, which is certainly difficult for human mentality. And rationalization of unexpected results is a process that takes time and needs to control our own emotions. But surgical trials are difficult to conduct and pose a particular pr uh, practical and methodological challenges. In this sense, LAC trials certainly have some limitations, include, which include the early closure of the trial with enrollment of 85% of planet per participants and somewhat reduced power for the primary endpoint. Additional limitations uh, that may, may warrant future studies include the imperfect assessment of cervical cancer stage, non-standardization of ad adjuvant treatment and non-performance of central pathology review. In addition, but, and it is an important point, that no pre-planet subgroup analysis was, um, was anticipated in this trial. Moreover, LAC trial have some critical issues, including that only 16% of patients in minimally invasive surgery arm underwent robotic surgery, that oncological outcomes of patients in, in open arm were surprisingly good, and then, then over half of the patients were enrolled in Latin American centers and the surgeries were performed by Latin American surgeons. We um, did raise some concern regarding the learning curve 
the quality of pathologies and preoperative imaging. But this, is, this coincides with one of the regions with the highest incidence of cervical cancer worldwide. And just to give you an example, Dr. Aldo Lopez in Lima, Peru, who was the main recruitment center in this trial, received over eight new cervical cancer cases per day in his hospital. But also, the same issue in New England Journal of Medicine published a retrospective cohort study regarding the same topic. After reviewing a cancer accredited hospital in the US uh, of patients with early cervical cancer between 2007 and 2010, the authors observed the same result of LAC trials. Patients who underwent radical hysterectomy by minimal invasive surgery had a significantly lower overall survival in comparison with open surgery. In this study, however, 85% of patients who underwent minimal invasive surgery received a robotic surgery, a much larger uh, proportion of patients than the 16% of LAC trial. Moreover, the authors also analyzed the CER database between 2000 and 2010 and as you may see in this figure, the proportion of patients undergoing minimal invasive surgery was stably low before 2006, while the patient's survival was progressively increasing. But after 2006, with the massive introduction of robotic surgery in the US, the proportion of women with early cervical cancer who were treated by minimal invasive surgery was significantly increased. However, during the same period of time, the patient survival declined by 1% every year. Therefore, it seems to be a direct correlation between of the application of minimal invasive surgery and the reduction of patient's survival. So, one of the main concerns in this regard is how can we explain these unexpected results? It is certainly difficult to explain but we might focus on the two main differences among both approaches, among minimally invasive and open surgery, that might be partially related to the uh, um, CO2 and the utilization of the uterine manipulator. But let me focus on the role of CO2 that might, be, that might produce peritoneal contamination during colpotomy. In this sense, let me show you the retros this retrospective study compared, which compared 49 patients who underwent minimal invasive surgery um, where colpotomy was performed intracorporeally, as it is, it is described in the standard technique, with 79 patients in whom colpotomy was performed vaginally after removing all CO2 in the abdominal cavity. As you may see, the rate of disease recurrence was five times higher than when colpotomy was performed intracorpor intracorporeally. In addition, this group represented, represented a strong and favorable prognostic factor related to disease-free survival. But LAC trial uh, was a very ambitious study and also investigated other issues which were in part reported at the last IGCS meeting in Kyoto a couple of months ago. They evaluated quality of life by using different validated questionnaires and as you may see here at different time points either preoperatively or postoperatively. Overall quality of life was similar between both surgical approaches as well as the several other items evaluated in this, uh, in this study. However, morbidity score was temporarily reduced in open arm, but it was similar at six, six weeks and after surgery, after surgery and, and beyond. And the same occurred for self-care self -care score. And finally, the adverse events were also presented at the same IGCS meeting in Kyoto, and as it was expected, patients who underwent minimal invasive surgery had a statistically, statistically significant longer surgical time, in mean 30 minutes, 
a higher estimated blood loss in mean 100 milliliters, which might be not clinically relevant, but, st but statistically significant, but had, they had a shorter hospitalization time in mean of two days. However, the analysis did not identify significant differences in intraoperative and postoperative complications among, among both surgical approaches. So, what are we going to do now with these results? Should we stop doing minimally invasive radical hysterectomy at all? Should we keep doing radical, minimally invasive radical hysterectomy though for those called non-believers? Or should we find a, a middle, middle line uh, and try to investigate our own data which will be always level 3 evidence, or should we modify some technical aspect of our surgical technique, for example at the time of per performing the colpotomy, or should we identify a low risk of patients to offer minimally invasive approach for these cases. In this regard, let me show you the da some data regarding those patients with tumor size of less than 2 cm or those without residual disease after conization. And this retrospective cohort study uh, analyzed this, uh, this topic, again talking about the level 3 evidence, but they observed that overall survival was worse only in the group of patients with tumor bigger than 2 cm. However, for those patients with tumor size less than 2 cm, the overall survival was similar bo among both surgical approaches. Black trial also analyzed the effect of tumor size on relapsed disease, and they were not able to find a significant association between tumor size and relapsed disease according with surgical approach but it is important to highlight that the study was not powered to perform this analysis and as you may see in the table, the absolute number of patients is very low. So in conclusion, I think that we need to discuss with patients scheduled to undergo radical hysterectomy these results and also patients might know about th the result of this, stu this study because this information is already available for the general population based on the great impact in the main media that, that uh, this study had. So how are we going to counsel our patients? We need to tell them that minimally invasive surgery and open surgery are associated with similar quality of life and one week and beyond except by mobility, with similar intraoperative complications and postoperative morbidities, and minimally invasive surgery is associated with longer surgical time but shorter length of hospitalization time. In addition, minimally invasive surgery is associated with four times higher risk of recurring disease and six times higher risk of death. So LAC trial certainly highlight the relevance of well-conducted and well-designed surgical randomized control trials, avoiding um, false assumptions or beliefs, and also avoiding to expose patients to unnecessary risk, which in this scenario means unnecessary oncological risk, in lieu of some recovery or uh, cosmetic benefits. So I, I also think that um, to keep doing minimally invasive radical hysterectomy at all, or to stop doing minimally invasive radical hysterectomy at all, are not uh, a good positions. I think that we need to try, to try to find something in the middle to offer the best surgical approach to each individual patient and in this scenario probably we need to, to modify something regarding to our surgical technique, for example at the time of performing colpotomy to, to isolate tumor and to avoid the tumor contamination uh, during this step, surgical step and also I think that we need to select these uh, patient, patients with early stage cervical cancer and to avoid uh, minimally invasive approach in those with high risk and to offer minimally invasive surgery to those at the lower risk of recurrence. So I think that it might be it, this, uh, 
this talk, this, this thought should be clear for you and should, be, should also be useful for all of you. Thank you very much.